All right, welcome to the first Kiali community meeting and sprint demo of 2023. We're gonna talk here about um, the, the release, which is gonna go out on Monday, uh, which is Kiali version 1.63, and then the last um, sprint, which is our last three weeks here. So let's get started. Um, short agenda, yeah, just a summary of the sprint, highlights of features and progress made during the last sprint, a little bit of a preview of the next sprint, and then we'll stop the recording and we have an open community discussion period where anybody can ask anything um, and we won't record it, so it's, it's just open. Uh, some people might be wondering what happened with version 1.62. Uh, the answer is holidays, we took a break. Uh, we did release version 162 uh, on January uh, 9th, actually, which was the Monday after the, the previous Sprint 84. So we we basically just didn't do the community meeting. Um, there wasn't a lot that went into that release, although it's in the release notes if you want to check that on Kiali.io. Um, but we'll also talk about notable additions from 1.62 in today's meeting as well. Uh, just a little bit of a breakdown of the last sprint. Um, if you look here, I mean, we've got a, we do most of our issue tracking within the main repo for Kiali, which is Kiali Kiali. Uh, but you can see we've also got a few other repos, Helm Charts, Operator, Kiali.io for the website, uh, and OSSMC, which is our service mesh uh, OpenShift plugin. Um, are different, we've got a few issues going on there. But most of the stuff that we do is tracked, even if it's actually related to those other repos in here. And in this Sprint 85, uh, we've completed a combination of 53 issues, and, and that includes the PRs for those issues. And then you can see that we've still got a few things in progress. Some of those things might even be closed today, which is the last day of the Sprint, um, that others might carry over. And we'll talk about that at the end when we talk about the next Sprint. So let's get into um, the highlights of the sprint. Um, the first highlight is we added another team member, Fernando Hoyos. So Fernando is here. You don't have to say anything if you don't want to, but uh, just wanted to welcome Fernando to the team. Uh, thank you, Jay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, so I'm very happy to join Kiali team, and I'm uh, looking forward to uh, help the community to um, work within the Kiali and to do greatest, uh, greater things. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we're happy to have you. And uh, since we do these demonstrations on a rotation in a few sprints, Fernando will be your host, I'm sure. <laughs> right. Sure. So let's get into it. Uh, one of the things that we've been focusing on quite a lot uh, in this most recent sprint and also the ones before it um, is more and more support for the emerging Kubernetes Gateway API which is still a work in progress, but there's certainly enough for us to, um, to already be preparing for and, and supporting. Um, in this particular sprint, uh, Hike and, uh, and Josune and a bunch of other people have been working in this area. And the first thing we did here was add request mirror mirroring support to the Kubernetes Gateway API routing wizard. So Kiali does, as most people probably know, have a bunch of wizards for generating config. Uh, and now we, we have one and we continue to add support for the Kubernetes Gateway API. And in this case, you can now define mirroring support for your requests. Um, in addition to generating config, we, um, we always have validation of the config that either is generated or edited or created by, by the users. Um, and there's been quite a lot of validation put into the Kubernetes Gateway API this time around with, I mean, I won't read through them, but you can see that there's three here on this page. Um, and, you know, just to point out the feature that when you're looking at config in Kiali, um, you get this nice interactive view, which you can kind of see here in the, the slide a little bit, where we highlight errors, warnings, uh, and on the right-hand side, you get to see uh, more detail 
and there's a lot of information and help that we offer. So like if you happen to hit this particular warning, if you hover over the information, you're going to get information about it. You can, and we're going to try to suggest ways for you to correct your problem. These codes are also all documented in Kiali.io underneath the validation section uh, under the features. So you can always go there for more information as well. But you can see in general, we're looking for things like um, conflicts in host port combinations, um, basically anything that's, that might trip you up. Um, continued um, two more validations that have been added just this sprint. Um, wanted to mention also, I kind of jammed it in here, but there's in this view, we have these references. Um, so if your config is referencing other config, we let you uh, link to those configs over here on the right hand side. Uh, here's a whole slide about it. Um, so yeah, now in the Istio config side panel, the HTTP routes can be seen as references. So this is very nice, right? So if, if you've got a piece of config, which is defining something else, you can go over here, quickly link to that thing and take a look at what it has, or if it has any errors or, or validation problems as well, you'll be able to see that. And we've added more references in this sprint. Uh, did I miss anything about that you wanted to mention, Pike, or anybody else on the, on the gateway, Kubernetes gateway stuff? Yeah, just the references are on both sides from route to gateway and the gateway to route. Ah, okay. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm going to hand uh, the mic over to Jasune. Uh, she's going to talk about, I think, a really important piece of uh, new functionality that we've added to Kiali, um, which can help it run in, in different scenarios. Um, yeah, so I'll thank let, you, Yay. I'll let you talk about it. Go ahead. Yeah, first, uh, just say that we have introduced these changes in the previous uh, demo. Uh, but it was not merged until this version. So uh, I just thought it would be nice to see like a quick demo about uh, how this feature is about. So I'm going to share my screen. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, thanks. Uh, so, uh, well, first to say uh, that uh, Kiali usually uses the STD endpoints uh, to get some features and some information from the control plane. But there are some scenarios where uh, this API uh, is not available to Kiali. Uh, if, like, for example, that is uh, it what's disabled or for some network uh, limitations or uh, other uh, deployment models that prevents the access here. Uh, so in this, uh, Kiali has some issues working when the, this API was not accessible. So in this version, uh, uh, we make Kiali to continue working. Uh, but it's important to mention that the feature uh, that Kiali offers uh, is going to change and uh, some information is not available. So uh, this is how Kiali looks like without, uh, with the Istio AP disabled. Uh, it's important to mention that it should be enabled through a configuration item that is the Istio AP enabled, that it should be set to false and restart Kiali in order to take effect. And well, one of the first changes that we can see is that we are going to see this label in the control plane card. Also, the control plane metrics are not going to be available. And for the canary upgrade uh, status uh, is going to be enabled. Uh, it can be um, enabled also with this with the feature. But for example, in this case, it was not. Uh, it was disabled the canary status information. So uh, we can see uh, here, like for example, uh, the control plane card uh, is reduced. Uh, another change is that uh, usually. Uh, 
uh, in Kiali, we can see uh, in the workload details the information about the proxy status. But in this case, uh, the healthy pod status is going to be uh, obtained without having the sidecar information because this information is provided by the, by the Istio API. Uh, another change that uh, we are not going to see is that the namespace, namespaces list uh, is obtained directly uh, from the Istio AP to populate the cache. But as this is not available, it can also be possible to obtain uh, using the Kubernetes API, but in some scenarios it can be degraded because Istio also has, uh, acts like a, a kind of cache, so it's going to be quick. Uh, and another change uh, that we can see when it's disabled is that like in the list of services, we are still going to see the services, but no the services uh, that are um, obtained using the registry of, of Istio, like for example, the external services. And this, this list may be reduced in case we are uh, having some kind of these objects here listed. And the last thing is that the Istio configuration can still be listed and created and updated, but the validations uh, are not going to be uh, done. So in this case, we are going to see a warning that is going to uh, uh, advise the users that uh, this change uh, cannot be um, can have some validation errors, but uh, we are not going to see that validations here, and uh, probably it can create some objects that are not uh, uh, have validations errors, but without us knowing. So this is some feature that is not not going to be available. Uh, so well, this is basically the changes, and uh, I will stop sharing, and I will pass the mic back to Jay. Thank you, Josune, and I will reshare. All right. So yeah, I mean, this is a really important feature because basically before this was put in, if you did not have access to the debug endpoints for Istio, um, if they had been shut down for security reasons, if they had they were just inaccessible due to your deployment model, or whatever reason, Kiali basically wouldn't work. And we wanted to make sure that people could use, still use Kiali in a degraded way um, with all the restrictions that Josune just went through. And, and like she mentioned, um, there's a new piece of config. Isti Oops. That Istio API enabled inside the CR set to false will indicate to um, Kiali that it, it shouldn't be trying to communicate with that API, um, but we can, but you can still get a lot of the features of Kiali. All right. This is just um, a nice little enhancement that we made. If you go to the manifest and you click on the question mark um, to get to things like the about information, um, we also have this view debug info option under that drop down and we've reformatted it recreated it um, to hopefully be more useful um, you get a bunch of you get two tabs basically uh, the kiala config will be the default which is going to show you immediately a whole bunch of ways that you basically all the uh, kiala config that's without showing you security sensitive information um, so you can give that back if you're trying to generate a bug report or something like that. You've got that information. And then under the additional state tab, you're going to get a big um, YAML of, of basically Kiali's state at that time. Again, it could be very useful if reporting issues and so forth or debugging yourself. So that is a nice little enhancement. So one of the ongoing large efforts that we have um, has been in progress for this sprint, the previous sprint, and for a while, uh, and will continue to go for a while, uh, is multi-cluster support. It's still in progress, and we just wanted to basically give a, a little bit of an update of where we're at, because we did make more progress in, in this sprint. So I'm going to hand the mic over to 
Nick, and he'll walk through it a little bit. Yep. Thanks, Shay. Yeah, just to give it, um, a brief overview of what the multi-cluster support is going to look like and kind of what we're targeting. Um, the goal is really to provide that a single view of your mesh from a single Kiali when your mesh is deployed across multiple clusters. And um, if you want more details on that, there's a proposal um, that's been open. It's a it's a PR against the Kiali repo. Um, please take a look at that and offer feedback, read more of the details. Um, we'd love to get your feedback on that um, and get more community input there. We've we've kind of been in um, a planning phase, I would say, but we're starting to to add support for this, and it's starting to come together. So some of the things that we did this sprint um, are making a hack script to get a local environment set up that you can um, test uh, a working OIDC setup with um, multi-cluster. We're adding support um, to the back end for multi-cluster, so that's coming together. Um, and then adding configuration for um, loading in Kiali secrets, which is how Kiali is going to be talking to um, multiple different Kubernetes backends. Is there anything else? It, like Jay said, it's, it's a large effort and a bunch of people are working on it. So anything else, anyone else to add about multi-cluster? All right. So the, the Another thing to mention with this is that the the single cluster experience will will remain the same. So whether you're deploying Kiali in single cluster or multi cluster, um, it should good be a, a good experience either way. All right, thanks, Nick. Um, yeah, as Nick said, we've got a lot of people that are involved. Uh, Nick, Leandro, Edgar have been kind of leading the effort. Um, Maz uh, has been getting involved recently with that secret support for the clusters and config on the config side, and probably everyone on the team will be um, involved in this effort over the next um, several sprints. And it's a very rough estimate, but we are targeting um, probably end of Q2 for some sort of initial support in this area. So if you have feedback, please get it to us. Um, soon because it could impact still the way that we go. All right, thank you. Let's keep going. Uh, notable enhancements and deprecation. So uh, we did remove or are removing in the next release the implicit flow for OpenID. Uh, this is something that we deprecated a few sprints back. And it basically means that if you happen to be using that flow, you need to switch to the authorization code flow um, pretty much now if you want to continue with Kiali um, updates starting with v163. Uh, additionally, we've got the Kiali CRD now supporting app protocol. This was just something that a community user had asked for, which makes total sense. Um, and we added in the chart tooltip. So this is kind of across the charts. You can find it in Sparkline charts or on the chart pages for workload or app or service detail for the, for the metrics. Um, just a little enhancement that we're, if you're hovering with the tooltip, uh, the date, if it's not today's date, will be presented. So it just gives you a little bit more information as to what you're looking at data-wise. Bunch of fixes. Um, that have gone in. I think the first one is kind of important. Uh, it was sort of a usability bug. Um, it's not like a functional bug, but a usability problem. We've tried to clean up how you define ports in the wizards. Uh, hopefully it'll be much more clear because it was pretty confusing before. Um, we had a problem that was reported where we could actually flood the, that debug endpoint. Um, that we were talking about earlier with the NoSDOD feature. Um, but we've, we've tempered that so that we should, that most likely won't be a problem anymore. Uh, we had a very rare telemetry situation that could panic the graph. That's been fixed. 
and a few other things that I'll let you read through if you'd like. All right, what's happening in the next sprint? Um, so if you look, we have a project board in GitHub. Uh, you can always go to it uh, and see what's happening. But you'll see that uh, today in Sprint 85, we have a few epics in progress, and those will continue. Um, the one we just spoke about, multi-cluster, um, a couple of others. Um, we are keeping an eye on ambient mesh, although I can't say that we did anything in particular in, the, in this re recent sprint. It's kind of an ongoing effort as ambient emerges uh, to make sure that Kiali continues to work well with that when it, when it takes over. Uh, we are still looking at a graph alternative um, that's based on pattern fly topology. That's sort of a background activity that continues to be worked on. Someday um, we'll present that when, it, when it's uh, robust enough. Uh, in the backlog, um, there's a few things, one of which is kind of in, maybe um, interesting to folks is that we're looking at tempo support on the tracing side. So that's something that we look to get underway soon. And that is basically it for today. So we can stop the recording and um, feel free after that to ask any questions or talk about anything that's on your mind. So Jasune, can you stop the uh, recording?